Super. 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 What up, my dearlies? It's your lovable baby boy, Brank. We're back from the dead and ready to bake some bread and bake it, not break it this time. I'm joined by... Just your uh, scaredy boy, Josh, can't even get through one episode of Haunting a Bly House without uh, covering his face with a blanket, so there's that. That's a real spooky, scary show. I haven't watched it, but I watched The Haunting of Hill House, I think was the... Mm -hmm. I, yeah, Dr. Donna recommended it. I love how we talked about Dr. Donna. He hasn't even been on the show yet. So if you didn't want listen to our old show, you probably don't know who we're talking about. Anyways, he recommended it and it was very, very, very scary. Um, so scary. I don't know if it was worth it, but it was a really good show. Did you watch the Hill House <laughs> one? I did. Yes. I remember did we like talked it? about it on the show. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. There, there's not a lot of good like horror out there where people are like developing characters and story beats and stuff like that. So it was a nice break. You know, there's substance, there's scares. It was a pretty good show. I yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed it. I don't think I'll ever watch it again, and I don't think I'm gonna watch whatever one you just talked about, hunt, hunting a Bly Manor or Blythe. Mm -hmm. It's a Bly Manor. It's season two of Haunting a Hill House. Okay. It takes place in England or something. Yes. I saw like a trailer. Yes, it does. So everybody talks like this, oi, governor, uh, oi. right? That's uh, and, and they say, <laughs> everybody bruv. says, oi, yeah, oh, bro, yo, bro, that's good, bro, oi, and bruv. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of people saying oi and bro for all of our English listeners. You know what we're talking about? We're not offending you one bit, okay? This is uh, separate but equal. You know, you're, our American brothers over here just having fun with your language. Um, besides that, what have you been doing on the spookiest and scariest of all months, October? Oh, uh, just putting up Halloween decorations, man. I'm like, this is the first time I'm out here in the country, you know, and there's no trick or treaters out here. So don't got to yeah. buy candy, but nice. Well, you got to buy candy for yourself for myself. So yeah, you can I might just on like that candy put a, one of those bowls out to say, like, take one and I'll just circle around the house a few times, you know. That's how you got to do it, brah. Anyways, before I forget, this is Super BS, a podcast about video games. Mostly, mostly. as you can tell, because we, we mainly have been talking about everything but games. But you've kind of been playing something a little bit on the spooky, scary side. Not really, but A Night in the Woods, right? A Night in the Woods, I sure have. It's not scary, per se. It's it's haunting. It's it's life is scary, you know, life is scary and a night in the woods highlights that scary part of life. Um, it's all the spooky and all the scary. Was there an alien running around the town? Uh, is that what makes life so scary? No, there's <laughs> a homeless killer kill. though. No, but, um, yeah. Is so there I mean, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's part of like the plot. Like you find, uh, like a severed arm just lying in the oh, street. Yeah. I got uh, there. I got yeah. to that part. So I got to this part. Like, they had the actual, like, night in the woods, you know, where there's a party and everyone realizes, like, there's the, the big realization, you know, I got to do something different here. And that happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's mostly been, like, <clears throat> this character, like, a, a, as you go on, as the parts go on and the days go on. So each part of the game is played in days. And as the days go on, you unlock more and more of the city to walk through. Like, I just unlocked the mall. And then I unlocked okay. the church, and then I unlocked like some lady's basement. So there's more places to go as the I game. I like that one real quick. Let's let's go back to that. Unlock the mall till here. Stand. Unlock the church. I get, I'm there with you, right? This is a small town. Why are you going into some lady's basement? Well, that's like, what we all need to know. The general store like fixes things. So your friend works at the general store, and you got to go to this yeah. old lady's basement to like fix her her uh, furnace, I guess you'd call it, and so. Then you end up, she ends up like locking you in the basement. You have to like break the furnace to escape. It's an interesting thing. But so is, this, is this like a fast travel point now? Old lady's basement, uh, mall, church. No, and here's the thing you don't get fast travel points. You just have to like okay. walk to all these places. So you keep walking, keep talking. Like there's achievements for like talking to people over and over and over again. Okay. And so you could do that. 
Uh, right now, I'm like at the point where it's got it's so repetitive. Like I am s- playing it slower than I was before. I used to be like excited, but now I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever. Okay. Maybe I'll just play through a day and then watch something on Netflix. So I'm at that point okay. right now, hoping I'm gonna finish it. And you chose to wet your pants with uh, Haunting of Bly Manor. I did. Right? That's what did. you were like. Hey, I want to w- end up tonight with some wet pants, so I got to watch that show. Yes. Get me some soggy undies, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's, that's what that's, uh, everybody knows. That's what it's so all I, about. We watch these pants wettingly scary flicks, okay? I'm all there for them. Bambi, yeah. all the scariest ones. I mean, duh. Why? Why not, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's that, and uh, that's pretty much all I've been playing right now. Okay, well, I'll, I've got some I've got some goods for you. Okay, I've been playing Ooh. some Super Mario Galaxy. I'm at uh, I think like sixty or seventy stars. I think there's a uh, hundred or hundred and one stars in that game. Uh, it's still great. I think I am done with Sunshine, meaning I do not know if I will go back and play it anymore. I got to twenty of their shines, and it is not fun. And it controls poorly, and Mario doesn't get a long jump, and he doesn't get all of his normal jumps. It's not a good game. Did you play it? I have not played it yet. I just I remember you just keep talking so poorly about it. So I don't know if it's yeah. something I'm ready to really dive into. You know? Yeah, I think if you uh, you sound like you got a lot of time to play games, is what you just said to me, <laughs> and you don't know what to play. So you just said that. True. Um, so yeah, play that. No, um, it's it's bad. Um, I also downloaded the Pikmin Three Deluxe demo oh. that went up. Uh, How much? What this? How much did you oh, spend on de- that sweet? The demo is free. Oh. <laughs> free 99 man free 99. Uh, no. so it's it's awesome the demo actually is kind of convinced me to buy it but i i still feel like i'm gonna get ripped off if i spend 60 so i'm gonna try to wait for it to go on sale but man pikmin is a fun series did you ever play one or two or three mm. i played one on the wii which one was on the wii that was one or two i think they re-released them both on the wii so okay. the wii u was where three came out Okay, so, I never played that one. Yeah, three's three's really cool. I loved uh, two. I mean, I liked one when I was gr- when we were growing up. But one did that thing that game oh, I can't stand when games do, where it had a time limit, like you had thirty days to complete the game in. So it's just super stressful because you're like, oh, I got to get all the stuff. I got to go do this. I got to do that, and you've got to like find all your parts. So like everything was annoying. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, if you make a mistake that day, you just ruin the whole day. You might lose the game. You might like mm-hmm. fail at the end. Yeah. Um, two got yeah, two got rid of that system. So I really enjoyed two. I want to say I finished that back on the GameCube. Um three I had on Wii U. I played a couple minutes. Uh, I probably played less than I actually did for this demo. I played this demo to the end of the demo, which was a lot of fun, like three days or so into it. Um and yeah, it's great, man. It is I, I think the the thing that would sell me immediately if it was like a forty dollar game. In fact, it's sixty bucks for a game that sounds like it's the exact same on Wii U. Some people have even written that they've removed quality of life things from this one. It's just hard to be like, oh, I get this for free when I had a Wii U and I didn't play it. So let's spend sixty bucks on it. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, yeah. it's tricky, man. But it's really good. I suggest everybody tries the demo out. It might be, you know, you might be like me and now want to buy a game that you originally were like, eh, I probably won't even get it at all. Um, I then picked up Ukulele and the Impossible Lair on Switch. It was on sale for like twelve bucks. Do you know what that is? I know what Ukulele is. Is this like a new version of it? <coughs> it's it's a pseudo sequel. It um it's a side scroller, unlike the real unlike the original Ukulele, which was like a Banjo Kazooie callback. Because it's made from the X Rare guys, the guys who made Banjo Kazooie. But these guys also, I don't know if these specific people, but this team, I think, also worked on some of the Donkey Kong Country games. Because this one, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, reminds me a lot of Donkey Kong Country 3. There's an overworld map. There's a lot of different neat things you can do to the levels. Like, oh, if you're outside of the world and there's an ice thing and the world has a lot of water, you can shoot the ice thing at the at the book, which is how you go into the stages, and then the stage will change. So everything that was water is now ice. So the game plays very differently. Um, yeah, and the, the, a lot of levels have at least two, um, or chapters, I think they're called. They have two different versions of the stage. So, yeah, man, it's pretty fun. Um, do you know a lot about it? or 
No, I know there's that controversy right over that YouTuber that was gonna be in it, and he said some oh. like naughty oh, words. That was and Markiplier, I think, or somebody. I I can't even remember exact. Not maybe not. Markiplier. I remember we one talked one about it. We talked about it on Super BS back in the day, but I don't remember so what was, the guy's name was. Yeah, he was a voice actor in the original ukulele, um, which had just like weird banjo kazooie style voices, like that style stuff. Yeah. Um, no, this is the sequel to that. So there's no like controversy with this one. But the cool thing about this game is, so it is a 2D platformer. There is an overworld you can run around to go to the different chapters or stages. And if you w are extremely good at platformers, you can attempt the last stage immediately, the impossible layer. You can attempt it like right from the get-go. You can walk up and try it. But it's super duper hard. So the way they make the game kind of fair is every stage you complete, each version of the stage grants you a, a bee, a bee warrior, right? And each of these bees essentially act as lives. So you can get hit for each bee that you have. So if like, I wanted like, to... Like I, the bugs. Are you talking like the, yes. uh, the dragonfly <laughs> and spyro type thing? Yes, kind of like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. But you can get a lot, a lot, a lot of these bees because every chapter has at least one. Some have two. Um, so the idea is like, yeah, if you're really good at platforming, you, I mean, if you're incredible, you might be able to beat it on your first try. Oh. But the idea is for someone like me who's just having fun playing it, I'm going to get a bunch of those bees. And I'm going to go back and buzz my way through that place, oh, man. It's going to be a buzz. real... B plus. Everybody <laughs> loves that pun. Um, but yeah, man, that so I've been playing that a little bit on the side when like watching movies or something on my Switch. The game that I've been playing the most is Iconfell. It dropped on uh Games Pass, I want to say last Wednesday night. It was supposed to come out on Friday, but it came out early on Xbox Games Pass. Okay. And I mentioned this on the October gaming thing. <clears throat> I just talked about it briefly. So yeah, oh, I yeah. So now. Looks talk neat. to me about this game. Um, what is it? So it's a turn-based tactical RPG um, with the sprite work of maybe um, a Super Nintendo game, like Earthbound, if you remember Earthbound from uh, Super Nintendo. So it kind of looks a little bit like Earthbound. It, the story is very much Harry Potter. You're going to a magical school to find your sister. There's all these magical characters, a bunch of stuff's happening. The, uh, the gameplay is, like I said, tactical turn-based RPG, but like... The moment-to-moment -moment feels a lot like Undertale, that RPG I talked about a ton because I love it. Um, so I've been really digging it, kind of like the the quirkiness of the characters. Um, for the very uh, sensitive listener, if we have one who's very conservative and sensitive, they're probably going to have a lot of, mm, I don't want to say issues with the game, but the game is very uh, politically correct and very diverse, meaning that I have not run into a uh, heterosexual white male yet. I have run into a lot of people of different persuasions, like a lot. I'm, like, I'm triggered. I'm you actually... need to stop. I'm triggered. Yeah, I know. I know. This is like such a weird thing to talk about, but it, it's worth talking about. Like, I'm still digging the game. I love it. I'm like definitely not one who likes stuff being forced on me, especially if it's like politically correct stuff. Um, but yeah, I still think it's great. It is like a little strange that there's no straight people in this world, but whatever. It's, a, I guess, a the person who made it is all about gender fluid um, stuff. And that's cool. You know, if that's what they, if they are actually doing it because that's what they care about and it's not to make money off of those people, then I'm all for it. If that's how they feel, it's their game, do whatever they want. But if it's just to get like brownie points, which sometimes some games feel like I'm not stoked on it. However, the writing doesn't feel like the brownie point style writing. It feels like it's good. It feels like they spent some time. It feels like all the characters are interesting. Like, unless you really, really are sensitive, you might not even care, you know, about that part of it. Because it's not like characters making out all the time and doing stuff. It's just like characters of the same You gotta, you gotta go gender. all the way, man. It's, it's all yeah. or nothing with with stuff like that. You just gotta just go for it. Oh yeah, no, I I think it's uh, I think it's a very fair balanced thing. And sorry, I'm talking about such a weird, sensitive topic. No, this is the world good. we live in. It's all. Um, good. but I I dig it, man. I really really like it. I never watched Steven Universe, but I guess the uh, musicians or the people who do the score for that they did the score for this. So the score is really catchy and fun. Um, it's it's just a really fun game and. It's supposed to be really short, so I'm kind of stoked. I think it's eight chapters. I'm on chapter two, and I've played three hours. So my estimation would be it's probably going to be like you know, 12, 14 hours, which is perfect. Um, 
And yeah, man, I really love it. I, I think it's just awesome. I definitely cannot recommend it enough. I almost bought it again on Switch. That's how much I enjoyed it. I was like, man, I kind of wanted to support these people more. But I'm going to wait a little bit because um, I'm playing on Games Pass and you can't transfer your saves. Do you think what? you're going to try it out at all? I, I know um, you don't love turn-based RPGs, but it you know it's free. Yeah, well, it's they're part a of struggle for me. I don't I don't know. I mean, if it's I'll I'll give it a try. This maybe this will be the one that that <clears throat> you know gets me further into these. But uh, you know, I'm still I just downloaded Resident Evil, so I'm like I want to play Blair Witch, Resident Evil. Oh, we got our we'll Halloween stuff. I'm this I'm, is uh, I'm doing some themed game in here. You know, this is a very spooky episode. Okay, we're gonna be all about that Halloween ish right after we come back well not right after we come back because we're going to do our news first but after our news man it's going to get so dark and spooky if you're a Ooh. halloween fan in here you're probably going to have to pull your headphones out of your ears so you don't pee yourself okay you better have a bucket on ears. hand in case you or pee your ears yeah <laughs> uh that takes two parties okay and that needs to be consensual okay <laughs> jay don't try to force your uh, just... your whatever <laughs> your kinks on others by yeah, uh, attacking we their ears. We went there. That's the number one thing this podcast is about: is unkink shaming, but also kink acknowledging. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're gonna let our listeners uh, not uh, hopefully unsubscribe, and we'll be back after this break. Super penis. Well, Lottie freaking da, we are back. Um, we're here with some news. The news has been disturbing. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, not, not really. A lot of it's just uh, next gen stuff, which the next gen is coming. And uh, whether you like it or not, Jay, it's going to be here. Okay? Like next generation or next Jennifer? Because uh, next, the next Jennifer, of course. Okay, I just uh, want to make sure we're on the same page here. We're all about that Jennifer Goodsley or whatever the name from the Harry Potter. Uh, what is Weasley. That? What's her name? Weasley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm not even talking about her. The actress who played uh, the girl in the the new Harry Potter movies. They're so bad. What are they called? Um, what are those new Harry Potter movies? They're garbage. Uh, Prisoner. Fantastic oh, Prisoner Beasts. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The lead actress's name is Jennifer something. It's uh, Let's do Fantastic Beasts. Because I know these listeners care about this. Like nothing else in their lives, they want this. Her name is Catherine Watterson. I am totally wrong. <laughs> so, Jennifer uh, Weasley it is. Okay. Anyways, for the news. Uh, here's something that came out. Almost all PS4 games will work on PS5 according to the recent articles. Um, they have confirmed that, like, I don't know, like, I think it's like a dozen won't. Um, did Wait. you read about this? No, you, but you said almost all, and then you said like a dozen. Yeah. That's not almost all. That's just a dozen. I, I'm saying almost all games will work from PS4 to PS5. They'll work. Okay. Only a dozen will not. Got it. So far, all different. right. But no, yeah, so, no PlayStation three or two or one, right? No, 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 no. They're not doing any of that stuff. No. But um, here I will, I will read the list of games that will not work, and it is, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. People who are very sensitive about this, they're insane because there's um, the games that aren't working are are not big games at all um let me find that list ps4 games that won't work on ps5 because dude i know that these are all going to be your favorite games okay i guess it's only 10 okay josh uh don't cry too hard because i know okay. this these are your favorite games and there's only four thousand ps4 games that <gasps> probably will run on ps5 so i know these 10 are your favorite so please stop crying dwvr it's not going to work, okay? So shut up already. It won't work, okay? Afro Samurai 2 Revenge of Kuma Volume 1. It's not going to work, you idiot. Um, <laughs> TT Isle of Man Right on the Edge 2. Not working, bozo. Just deal with it. Shadow Complex Remastered, your favorite, came from Xbox 360 that I didn't even realize was on PS4, but it's not coming over to PS5, you dingus. Robinson the Journey, We Sing, Hitman Go, Hit, this is probably the biggest one, Hitman Go Definitive Edition. Did you ever play that one? No, I did not. 
Is play it like on a... your iPhone, you fool. Yeah. Stop trying to play it on your PS5. Shadwin, which I have no clue what that is. And Joe's Diner, which is, I know, your favorite game from last generation. It's just just that those uh, are the reasons that i own a playstation you just named all 10 of them so and then you insulted so not me personally over yeah, well, my choice my of games so i Sony wish this just was a video podcast yeah i wish this was a video podcast so we could share joe's diner because the fans are going to be furious when they see what they're missing out on i know um I know. that in shadwin what is shadwin let's see what it is uh it is looks like a stealth game that probably costs two dollars so you're not gonna play it on your ps5 so stop crying to us you clown um anyways it's not gonna happen that's uh that's not gonna happen at all and sony then decided to detail the upgrade paths uh save transfers etc it sounds like most games are gonna be or games where the developer wants to do free upgrades like cyberpunk it's free don't need to worry about it Sounds like the, some games, the save transfer is going to be real easy. Sounds like some of them, they're not even going to try. Like, I don't think your Spider-Man PS4 save goes to Spider-Man Remaster on PS5. Oh, come on. Sure. I know, man. I know you wanted to, I know you're waiting to spend $500 on a console to play a game that you Jeez. could easily play today, but you don't want to play oh, it, was, okay? That was the selling point for me. It's, it's over. That was the... Sorry, Sony, you lost a clear yeah, 500. That was easy money. Was easy it. money. Okay, now to our next news. This is one that I actually legitimately think you're going to be interested in. The Medium. It gets a re- December release date. Oh. So that was like a game I mm-hmm. say you were you were interested in, right? I was, yeah. Are you going to buy an Xbox Series X now? Mm. Now that the game you want is going to be there, are you finally going to do it? I'll be honest. I'm going to attempt to get one. There's no guarantees that that's going to happen. But uh, Oh, that's what you always say. Just because you don't want to go out there and pay the money, you should you know, get over yourself, okay? Just get buy over it. yourself. Buy an Xbox Series X. Just, Just buy it. Just do it. Just do it. Um, Snap into a Slim Jim. M- Microsoft will allegedly bring xCloud to the iOS... That's via browser support or whatever in 2021. So we've kind of talked about this briefly. Like they're not able to bring their apps because Apple's being a jerk about it. Um, so they are going to bring a browser supported thing, which is similar to what Amazon's doing with, I want to say it's Luma or whatever their uh, service is. You know, at Maybe that point, that though, called. I would ra- much rather, instead of playing it on my iPhone, I'd much rather just buy a tablet and play it via like one of the android stores you know instead of i just like i feel like it's not going to run as well on an iphone yeah i mean we'll see oh and by the way the amazon one's called luna not luma which makes a lot more sense i was wondering why is it called luma um yeah man i i don't know like i may try it i think that's kind of the most interested i am in it is like oh it's neat but yeah if they had an app that was actually on my phone i would probably be a lot more interested but i just always am distrustful of things running in a browser because yeah. there's a lot of levels and layers that um, could make that run really slowly. Yeah, like um, ogres, so right? They have layers, like onions. Yeah, they got ogres like layers. Uh, that's uh, Mike Myers quote from everybody's favorite film ever, <laughs> Shrek and Shrek Two. <laughs> um, everybody loves that man. Yeah, they your do. favorite game. You you told us this already last week, but your favorite game from the original Xbox was Shrek's uh, Shrek. Fun right. Party Pack or whatever it's called. What yes. did you ever play that game? No, Shrek party there wasn't game. there a Shrek. There's a Shrek cart game though, wasn't there? Shrek, there was, and Shrek Super Party, which is the one I'm referring to. Shrek cart game. Let's see what this is on. It's called Shrek um, Carty th- Party. Is that was that what it's called? Shrek Super Party. No. Um, and then there is Shrek Cart, but Shrek Cart only came out to iOS. I know it's your number one game, okay, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can play it. It's, it's the only on I switched iOS. over from a. Uh, xbox the microsoft phone to an iphone so i could play Sh- shrek cardi party man you are missing out i wish we did like a real show so we could just play shrek super party together because this <laughs> thing is amazing <laughs> it uh it would be totally worth the penny or whatever it costs nowadays to own it um yeah shrek super party is amazing everybody knows justin timber T- justin timberlake made Jesus. the shrek third and fourth <laughs> films everybody loved him in it it was uh astonishment i mean everybody was like oscars 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 and it just gives all the oscars to him um the xbox series x i guess the the people have had um the reviewers and all the people in the media have had 
their hands on it. They finally got their hands on some uh, Xbox Series X games. I guess they were finally allowed to try Yakuza, Like a Dragon, and Dirt 5. And from what I understand, graphically, we should not be expecting for a huge bump. But uh, quality of life improvements, they say, are really great. They say the load times are so fast that they're almost unnoticeable. Same with the quick resume feature. They say, it's awesome. Uh, my question to you, though, is what do you think with Xbox getting out there a month in front of the console launch and giving all these reviewers this stuff? I, I, I'm a little concerned. So you have something to answer to. I'm a little concerned they're doing this too early. And that PS5 is going to do this like the week or two before. The consoles launch. I don't know. I mean, I feel like this gives them plenty of time to like experience it, you know. And it shows like a, a it's a show of good faith to me too. Like we're confident in this product, you know, and because they're trying to make up, I imagine for you know the lack of games that'll be available at launch, the the loss of Halo as a launch title. So they're getting it out to the the reviewers. They're getting uh, you know good word of mouth out there, and I think that this is a show of good faith, whereas, you know, Sony will come out with within a week and people will not have the experience uh, with the PlayStation 5 as they were allowed with the Xbox Series X. So I kind of, I think that it's a, a smart idea, uh, but it's also very risky. But from what you're saying, it sounds like the feedback's relatively positive at this point. Oh, it's extremely positive. And if this was timed with, like, more uh, pre-orders going up, I think it would be incredible my biggest, um, I, I wouldn't say concern, but my biggest thoughts on it are that by doing it this early, for all we know, maybe some reviewers and outlets already have a PS5. I'm not sure if they do, but they might have held their embargo a lot closer to release date. And we all know how the internet works nowadays. Everybody can only think for like one day about something and then the next day it's something else. So I'm just wondering if this play, while it's the best, I think it's the best and the nicest thing you do for the outlets and the reviewers, gives them plenty of time with it. I'm concerned the mind share will be on PS5. I, I think concern's a strong word. I think the mindset will be on PS5 if they release it and let all the embargoes go up like a week before the console launches. Like, I don't think people are going to be thinking about Xbox Series X if somehow the PS5, all the news shows up like that week, you know, Monday and the Xbox yeah. launches Tuesday and the PS5 launches. Thursday. Yes. So, I mean, that comes down to what is Xbox going to be able to or what are they going to have that's going to keep them in the news that week? And I imagine that they've thought about this, but I also hopefully hope. Yeah, I'm, ho I'm hopeful that they have thought about it, but I also don't know what they could possibly do to to stay in the news that week as well, because they've already made most of their major announcements. Yeah, so there is a rumor that they've bought another company that they're not talking about yet. I think we discussed it like a week or two ago. Um, I think that's the only thing that they could do. And I think the smart play would be the week or the week before, either the week before launch or the week of launch to reveal that news. Because I think, like I said, I just the way Sony's been doing everything this generation, it's been really anti-consumer, anti-outlet, but... It's people's minds are going to be thinking about that product if they do this thing where it's like, oh, hey, we only gave it to, con to outlets a week before, or two weeks before. Or the embargo only goes up one day before. This is a month before the Series X launches, and now they have tested the Series X with, you know, new next generation games and previous backwards compatibility. Awesome for the reviewers. Awesome for the people who have tried it. But honestly, like, I, I don't think you know a lot of us who are reading it's just like, oh, that's cool. But you know, it's a month from now. A lot changes in a month. So it's after the it's after the U.S. presidential election, which we're being bombarded by every single day. Like it, it's going to be hard to even think about this stuff when that stuff happens. Yeah, I mean, they could do. Speaking of voting, I mean, they could do the thing that people are doing now, where if you if oh, you buy don't. an Xbox, they'll send you a don't. bikini pic. But you know. Oh. <laughs> nice. Okay. I was about to say, I thought you were going to tell them to like do vote advertisement. I'm like, I'm sure they have that hidden somewhere. <laughs> if one more person tells me to vote, I'm going to start slugging people in the face. Okay. <laughs> I already am registered. Stop yelling at me, Instagram. I don't even want to go on your site anymore. Don't I don't want to hear our drop. Um, yeah, no. It, so, I mean, if, if they were to drop that sweet, sweet announcements about our uh, friends, over at the uh, Blue Hedgehog house, uh, it would be cool if they also, because there's rumors about a Dreamcast Mini coming out. So maybe they're like, 
yeah. and powered by Microsoft Processing, the new Dreamcast. Like, have that announcement come out that week, too? That would be kind of rad. Dude, I'll do you one better. How awesome would it be if they bought Sega and then, like with the Dreamcast Mini, they're like, you can buy a Dreamcast Mini or all of those games are backwards compatible on the Xbox Series X. Yeah. Like, or maybe like honestly, there's, things like... Maybe there's a launch title that has a bunch of Dreamcast games on it. Yeah, man. And that game's on Games Pass or something like... Oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's... There's a lot of stuff they could do, tons of things they could do, but it mm-hmm. really depends on like what people are doing, what they're working on. Microsoft's been, at least in the last few years, an extremely open company outside of Bethesda. There have been almost no surprises. Bethesda yeah. was probably the biggest surprise in gaming, but for Microsoft in, I don't know, five years like, I can't think of anything that was like, after Scalebound was announced, I can't think of anything they've done that's actually surprised me. Because I think that was the same year as Rare Replay and all the other stuff that I was like, oh, yeah. this is neat, this is cool. And then a bunch of that stuff got canceled. Um, Yeah, man, we will find out. We got two more shorties, short news stories to talk about. One is Avengers. Um, I guess their PC player uh, base is dwindling like crazy. There's less than 1,000 players on PC at any given moment, they're saying. So what do you think is going to happen to that game now that no one is playing it? And it's only been, what, uh, I think a month after release? I don't. Has it even been a whole month? Yeah, yeah, okay, it came out the end of September. So it's been a little bit over a month. I don't know. So, I mean, I've talked to people who are still playing it on their consoles, and they seem to like it all right. But, yeah, the the drop in, because PC seems to be, like, where the numbers are at as far as like multiplayer games are concerned. And so that does make me wonder, you know, what what is the, I guess, fan base or how long does the fan base last for a superhero game? Like, are they worthy of having these big companies invest in them anymore? I don't know, man. This is uh, it's an interesting thing. I do think this game would primarily be console-driven. Like, you're right. Most multiplayer games are big on PC, but I just think this was made, first and foremost, for consoles. But I think um, from what I've read, because I didn't pick it up for a lot of reasons. One, I think it's going to be dirt cheap here soon. But it's a live service game, and they haven't been able to detail their roadmap. There was a rumor mm-hmm. that they were working on a lot of Black Panther stuff, and the week before their war table was when Chadwick Boseman passed away. Yeah. So they didn't want to talk about that stuff. But if that's true, I think it's been almost a month since that happened. If that's true, they really need to start getting back on this wagon. Because I think the only thing I know they have announced is like uh, the two Hawkeye characters, which are coming in like, I think, late November or December. And they have a raid that's supposedly in the game, but you can't access it. Like it's waiting for a patch. Oh. So it's like... I, I don't know. I you know From what I had heard from uh, reviewers, it's supposed to be a lot better game than you would imagine, but it's not very long. It's supposed to be like 14 hours, and it's a live service game, which means they want people to play it all day, every day. They want you to buy all your skins. They want you to get the Beanie Babies. They want you to get the Howard the Duck costume because everybody skins. loves that character. Yeah, Howard the and Duck. And it's going to be Howard the Duck in that scene where he's with that human woman seducing her in the room. So the, the one that everybody remembers from Howard the Duck. <laughs> um, man, that would be that would be the character I'd want to see in that game. If they could do anything that would just make me giggle and have a blast, it would be to add Wakanda as like an Elder Scrolls style area that you could explore, which will never happen. But then add Howard the Duck as a playable character <laughs> in Wakanda in Wakanda, man. Um, it is crazy. That Marvel owns Howard the Duck. Um, and George Lucas directed that. George Lucas directed that film, right? I'm not talking out of my my rear side, am I? No, actually, I don't think he did. I looked this up the other day. Howard the Duck. He was like a producer, I want to say, or something on it. Howard yeah, he, he was Duck. a producer on it. He did not direct it, which was a big miss on his part. He could have been behind the huge Howard the Duck film. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. favorite. Um, I guess it's a LucasArts film. Um, tell us your favorite Howard the Duck moment. My favorite Howard the Duck <laughs> moment? Yeah. Uh, tell us your favorite scene from Howard the Duck in detail. <laughs> the, uh, the, I don't know. I this don't is have real one, serious, actually. Guys. Yeah, I know. This is a real, Have you ever like, watched Howard the Duck? Good, I have not seen Howard the Duck. I, I remember, wasn't he in one of the closing credit scenes for Guardians of the Galaxy? 
Oh yeah, I think he, I think you're right. I think he was. Um, I've never seen it either, but I either watched a YouTube video about it or I read something. And I guess there's a lot of like naked duck people in a PG rated film, and I guess they have like human like breasts, and it just sounds like what who who made this and what were they thinking? Like what weirdo? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not trying to kink shame. If they like ducks, that's you know their thing. <laughs> but what what a strange person was like? Yeah, we we got to make this horny. We got to get those ducks real nice. Like it's the weirdest. Oh my goodness, uh, humanity is uh, is lost, and the end of the world is coming, folks. Howard the Duck uh, declared it 30, 40 years ago. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, sorry, that was weird. I just kind of like looked it up on Google, and yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, it's that's it's a lot of that uh, slightly that uh, off-putting. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, you, we know what our li- listeners love, and they love that duck talk. That yeah, sexual duck just, talk. Can I just um, uh, bring up the the comment that you said we don't kink shame twice on this show? Uh, so I mean, yeah, who are you trying to okay. convince at this point? Is what the listeners all want to know. I am convincing Willard Hyuk, the director of Howard the Duck, <laughs> that he can come on here as a guest, and I will not kink shame him one bit if he comes on here with duck clothes. If he comes on here dressed as a human anthropomorphic duck, I will not make a comment about it, okay? I will celebrate him. I will glorify him. I will do what's right. Um, last bit of news um, to take it on the other side, the non-fun, non-duck related news. Yeah, where the is, red hot chili uh, peppers are the other side. Yeah, on the other side. Uh, this is this is sad, okay, Josh? I don't appreciate you <laughs> making fun of this sad news. No, legitimately, this is kind of a bummer. Um, Level 5, the company that's made like Nino Kuni, Nino Kuni 2, White Knight Chronicles, tons of other Japanese role-playing games, they are ceasing their North American productions. Um, I assume it's not worth it for them. So no more games from Level 5 coming to America. No That's more Yokai lame. Watch Four. Did you ever play Yokai Watch, or do you know no, what Yokai Watch is? I don't know what that is. I know Nino Kuni. It's like a cool. yeah, Nino Kuni and Nino Kuni Two. Dope. Um, Even after that Yo-Kai Netflix Watch, special, they're they're still pulling out. Yeah, they're still pulling out. They're not going in. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> Yokai Watch is um, yeah. It it was like a Pokemon like. So you ran around like a little city in Japan. It was really cool. Like probably somewhere in Tokyo. And you caught these weird monsters, but the gameplay wasn't great. Like the combat, you would like spun a dial and the monsters that you landed on would be the ones that attack. So you didn't really have any control, uh, but it was, it was still a neat idea. And the Yokai watch four that was supposed to come to switch uh, is probably not coming. I think this is a big sign. So um, yeah, man, uh, what are you going to miss the most about level five? Your favorite company ever. I uh, just, I before. guess, uh, the ability to possibly play a game that they made. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that ability is gone. You cannot buy Nino Kuni on Switch Man, now. They took I that just, away. Okay? I liked having the option, and now it's gone. And I just, I'm gonna give <laughs> up playing games. I'm retiring now. I am so sickened for you that you don't have the option to play games anymore. They're level five. Also yeah. don't even notice this. They control all the games. So no they, more they games. Do. When we heard this, this is the end of games. This is it. Goodbye. Uh, even though <laughs> they were relatively, thank you for uh, saying goodbye. Um, they were a relatively small company, but they somehow controlled all output and production of games in the world. So this is it, man. That's true. That's uh, it. Thank you for wishing this destruction on humanity. Yeah. This Jay. Is the final episode of super BS. Uh, no more games to talk about. That's it. So we're going to pivot. It's uh, now a Howard the Duck podcast. <laughs> uh, Willard, Willard Yuck, join in. Just jump on this uh, Google Hangouts right now, boy. What are your thoughts on Duck, uh, I like <laughs> quack, 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 quack. <laughs> he doesn't actually speak English anymore. He just quacks. Quack, 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 quack. Uh, he's got a really weird bill on his face, uh, and yeah, he's is, in is... a bed of water. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're uncomfortable, but that's because you are a kink shamer, okay? And I'm over here <laughs> protecting Willard Yuck's rights, okay? I'm hoping I'm saying his name right. Uh, he can't answer anymore because he's a duck man um, <laughs> after that movie <laughs> where he had a – what's that girl's name? Uh, the one from Howard the Duck. She was in – she was the mom in uh, Back to the Future. Hey, wasn't there also like an animal-human oh, romance Thompson. in B-Movie with Jerry Springer? B-Movie animal romance uh i am looking this up 
No, I think you're wrong. But there is a Wasn't awesome. He, oh he yeah, in, no, no. Actually, he was I in think love might... with the the human, right? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're talking about a human that wears a yellow striped dress that kind of looks vaguely like a bee. Yeah, that is man. What what what's up with some of these directors? I gotta ask. Like, why in Sonic does he kiss a woman? The Sonic game for uh, I think it's Sonic like 2006. Uh, why is why is there a human woman and why is he kissing her? Why why do we have these things? Just what's what's going on with people? <laughs> <laughs> Willard Hoy, c- come on in here and join and explain yeah, it was, why it this all, is going it's on. It's all started by Howard the Duck. <laughs> yeah, dude, that is uh, that that's an interesting one. That will be our next uh, watch later, which is what we're creating. We're gonna steal someone <laughs> else's name of their show <laughs> and just watch a movie together. Howard the Duck. Um, we couldn't put that on here though. It's uh, PG thirteen, not for kids. It's actually a PG rated film. That's the craziest thing about that. That's yeah, like well, I mean, it was weird. made in the '90s, right? Where those that the rating system was weird back then. Yeah, man, I eighty eighty six, but yeah, I I am so confused who or how they decided what something was rated. Like the fact they have like a human duck romance alone should make people be like, hey, "This is a little weird. Should we want little kids to watch <laughs> this extremely strange?" Uh, duck? Not no kink shaming, by the way. This is not a kink shame. <laughs> uh, duck human romance that's going on. Um, you know, it is uh, interesting and awesome. Well, Jay, that brings me to the scariest thing of all, um, which now we know Howard the Duck was scary. What are the top five scariest games you've ever played? We're going to do a list. Our top five scariest games we've ever played list. You give me one. I give you one. I You give me one. I give you one. All the way to number one. Do you have an honorable mention to kick us off? Hold on. I'm looking it up right now. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. He always comes prepared, folks. He Hold is on. the most prepared person. Um, when he's not writing Howard the Duck fan fiction, okay, he is always preparing. Uh, for honorable reviews. mention: the Haunted Mansion video game on GameCube. Uh, I just want to oh, give that wow. a quick shout out. <laughs> was <laughs> it Eddie Murphy's performance, or what was? Uh, just what killed all, you about that? All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was spooky. The controls were scary. <laughs> the <laughs> The screen was hard to stare at. It was just like the oh. world's most amazing scary video game i'm scared to play it again is the big thing going on here poor eddie murphy man that guy was uh beverly hills cop and now he is in the haunted mansion and osmosis jones how the great have fallen (laughs) um yeah that looked like a trash and a half oh my goodness that i can't believe you played it (laughs) um the next scariest thing on your list should have been the haunted mansion ride in the nintendo video game where you go to disneyland did you ever play that game i did and that part of the game was actually incredibly difficult because i never specify whether you're supposed to like duck or jump and so you end up like doing a weird mixture of both and they still like you still pass the level even if you don't do anything. So it's kind of a weird concept. And I think it's played for people who are dumb and still like video games. So it's perfect for me. Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, clearly. You, you nailed it, man. That <laughs> game was made by Capcom. That is the craziest thing. And that game is uh, rated the greatest game of all time. So that is not crazy. That's understandable. Wait, what was made by Capcom? Um, uh, Disneyland Adventures, the well, old Nintendo. Really? Game. Yeah. Uh, no. I guess it kind of makes sense. They used to do every weird game like that, like the Disney sponsored game. Don't you remember they did? Uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, Chippendales, I thought Rescue Rangers. I thought you were Darkwing talking about Duck. the the Connect game. I thought that's what you were talking about. Oh no, I thought we were. Sh- did you have a Nintendo, an original Nintendo? No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, and okay. They had a game called Disneyland Adventures for the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, and you'd go on rides, kind of like what you did in the Connect game, and all the rides were different platforming things, and one of them I want to say was a race, kind of like a precursor to Mario Kart, if I can remember. But uh, no. but yeah, it's it's awesome, man. I loved that game as a kid. I cannot find... Oh, it's, oh, it's not like Mario Kart. It's like... Um, Oh, man, you would totally recognize it. It's like a top-down racing game. They had one like it in arcades when we were kids, and you would go around a track. Anyways, they had a mission like that in it, and that's the greatest game of all time. That's what this list now is. (laughs) Greatest game of all time list. Okay, for my honorable mention, this is actually a favorite of yours, and I thought it was kind of like spooky, a little spooky. Um, Alan Wake. 
I totally mm-hmm. thought Alan Wake was kind of scary at times. Um, I don't know if I'd call it the scariest game ever. That's why it's honorable mention. But it is. Uh, it's a little spooky. A little spooky. What do you it think is. About it? it is. So that's actually my number three here. So I'll just okay. talk about it now. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's the idea that like the darkness is the bad guy. I think is what's the most like off putting about it, and the fact that like. They did a great job with like introducing different enemy types, right? You have your ones that are just like lumbering towards you. You have your berserkers. You have your like little speed guys, and all of them like they dis- they wrap themselves up in the dark, so you never know where they're coming from. You can hear in the speakers like someone like moaning or growling or something, but you never know where they're coming from. And that so when me. you see that light up ahead. Your your heart just like going bah, 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 as you're trying to make it to this thing without getting meleeed by somebody, and uh, because of that, like yeah, the game constantly keeps you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you, man. I think it's really great, and uh, I was the one doing all those voices. You you can look for my credits in the <laughs> game. They're, spoiler alert: they won't be in there. Um, I did not do that stuff, but yeah, that 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 game had a lot of really good moments. The things that scared me the most, I want to say is the very end had like a very Stephen King esque. He watches a TV and just kind of something spooky going on. That stuff always gets to me. Um, yeah. What is your number five? So I got silent Hill. This is one where like, I look back at it now. Um, Ooh, it was scary really scary at the time. And just the, they did a good job with like the audio making you like same thing with Alan Wake. They did a good job of like dispersing the different sounds through the different parts of the speakers. And, you know, looking back and I always like, liked the story of silent Hill a lot, you know, with the, the town on fire and stuff like that. Like I always really liked that story and I liked the idea Mm -hmm. of it, but I mean, looking back at it now, I just, it's not something that I would probably ever go back and play again, but um, I remember at the, what's that? Too scary for you. That's why you wouldn't. No, go back and play. yeah. Nothing to well, do with I mean, how it's, it's aged. Just, it's purely it, how it, scary it is. It's the same type of scares I got from the Resident Evil Two PlayStation game. You know, so it's just it's something that okay. like if I wanted those type of scares, I could go to Resident Evil Two and ha- have a game that's slightly less frustrating. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that is uh, that's one I'll never play. I found that series to be. Way too scary for me. I tried like a demo, I want to say, of the PS2 one, and Pyramid Head was uh, following me around, and I gave him some kisses, and that didn't go well. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I thought it was a, a hugging, kink- kissing game. Yeah, we're not kink shaming though. <laughs> I yeah, I'm not kink shaming anyone for hugging and kissing Pyramid Head. That's what I tried to do too, because he looks like he needed a hug. Um, my number five, and this is probably gonna surprise you. You're gonna jump out of your seat. You're gonna be so wowed. Um, The Last of Us Part Two. Oh. I actually think that game has some moments. Most of it is not scary at all, but it has some moments where I think these characters, they're called like hunters or stalkers. They're one of like the zombie esque like beings that you encounter. And they're always in extremely dark hallways. And the way you you approach them, the two times you see them is something runs by really quick. And then you have to go out into this place where it's very dark. All you have is a flashlight from the game and it's really hard to see anything, and they could be around any corner. And they make kind of like slight noises right when they get close to you. And yeah, I thought that stuff, I I, dis, I thought it was so scary that I would save those moments till I could play in the day. That is <laughs> when I judge if a game is you play scary. with the lights on? Yeah, I don't want to play this at night. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good game. You should play it. What is your number four? So you know what's hard about these games is that like – you want if you're too scared you want to play them with the lights on or like during the day but yeah. you can't see them as well so they're really like they be it take like a difficult game and they, it makes it even more difficult to play um yeah i yeah, i totally understand yeah so my number four i got evil within two i remember oh, nice. I, I don't know if this game's like as scary as it is anxious you know it gave me a lot of anxiety playing it because yeah. you you literally start, r- they throw you like right into it. You know, you're yeah. you're in this hospital and the game starts and you're being chased by this like giant monster thing and you're trying to like hide in the closet and you don't know like if he's going to open the closet or what he's going to do and then you got to like make it outside 
and then you're just stuck in this dead sprint through the woods. Like it throws you into it and you have no time to react. You're just running for your life. And like that is caused me a lot of anxiety, but it was also like it was a terrifying anxiety. Um, this is one that like I did not play through all the way just because it was like so making me so anxious that I was starting to feel sick while playing it. So I had to turn it off. So that is my number two game. My number two scariest game is The Evil Within 2. Uh, yeah, I totally understand how you feel. Um, that game is really scary. Uh, I think in some ways it's less scary than some of the other stuff I'm going to talk about, even though it's my number two. But yeah, those moments, they're just really uncomfortable, especially when you go to like, I don't want to, I can't remember what it's considered, but like the dream-like world, because he would go to like yeah. a weird world. That place is uncomfortable. I hated going there. I was yeah. way more excited when I was in the normal world getting like power-ups and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's a scene I remember where you're like kind of, there's like this, a monster or two monsters and you had to go around them. You have to wait for them to come in one door so you can go out the other door. Oh man, that stuff always makes me really uncomfortable. Um, that's a good choice though. I really stick by your decision because it's awesome. Did you awesome. finish the game? No, I didn't. No, I fell off. I, I liked it a lot more than one. I played a little bit of one. I fell off that immediately. But yeah, uh, yeah I Evil Within 2, is it was good. I probably played, I don't know, maybe like eight, ten hours. Um, I got through like a few of those flashback things. And I was like kind of, you know, like because the thing is it's kind of open worldy. So yeah. you kind of go around and, and do some stuff. Yeah. I, I want to get back to it at some point. I really did like it a lot. Um, the, my the, number four. Yeah. Well, ahead. sorry. One more thing about Evil Within. The, yeah. The ammo scarcity was like up to a whole new level in that game compared to a lot of the other games of that style. Yeah, they definitely want to make you feel uncomfortable because you're not going to be able to take on a lot of the stuff. It, it makes it tricky because like sometimes you break into a house and you want to kill like the I can't remember. I think they're like zombie like beans, but yeah. like the people that are in them, um, you want to kill them, but like you can't waste bullets. So yeah. you got to like you be careful conserve. about how many people you shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff out of that game, like the upgrades and systems and all that were just a blast. Um, my number four is the Resident Evil 2 remake that came out, uh, last year. It's crazy. It feels like so many years ago. Um, that game is incredible there. I, I didn't actually find it that scary. Um, that's why it's my number four, but it had its moments and I definitely felt uncomfortable at times. Um, I was almost wondering if I should put this below Last of Us Part Two because I played most of this game anytime I wanted to, but there were moments when I played at night where I was extremely anxious, um, especially when you're in the police, uh, the police office. So like that's yeah. the place I felt the most <clears throat> uncomfortable. I want to say. So I got that on my number two actually. So <laughs> oh nice. Well, we're, uh, we're trading places. So I, it, it's weird to me because it felt like a whole new game, you know, and like. As yeah. well, I think what made it really scary for me is the fact that I had played it before. You know, I had I had played the one on PlayStation 2 completion and like okay. I remember the settings and I know what happens in them, but I just like didn't know how it was going to happen. So that's what made it scary for me. Like you go into the okay. part with the dog kennels, right? Like something's yeah. going to be there. Oh. How is it going to happen? Where is it going now? Because you can hear like the the little bit of growling in the background, and you're just not sure yeah. where it's coming from or like when you're going to get jumped. So I just like pretty much spun in circles all the way through that little thing there because I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so it, yeah, it's just, man. Yeah, it, a it dog was, kennel scene. Oh rough. my gosh, yeah, dude, and like the having um what Mr. X chase you around or whatever his name was. Yeah, like, that's pretty scary but yeah i mean I, i'm torn on him half of the time he was just more annoying than scary like yeah he was scary but it's more like man i just want to do these puzzles please stop showing up because i gotta run <laughs> around and hide from you now but yeah i agree he was yeah. scary i just was very frustrated every time he'd show up because it meant oh i need to go hide or yeah. like try to get him to a different well room. i hated the part where like i fell off of the game for a long time after that part where you're in the hallway and you have to like throw the switches and he's literally mm. just like right behind you yeah um, yeah that's that scene the library he's like you have to move a bunch of stuff in the library so you have yeah. to keep like running up the stairs and yeah man i i like mr x i think he's a great character and a great idea but 
I just wish you could like have a like a choice to be like, yeah, let's put him on twenty five percent or or something, you know, like yeah. slightly less Mister X, yeah. um, or you know, they could do like kind of semi nemesis where it's like, oh, if you shoot him enough times, maybe he goes away for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, I I don't know something, but yeah, whatever. I mean, the game's out, it's great, um, but Mister X, I was happy when he died because yeah. I was ready to just play the game. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, what is your number three? Um, it, we covered it already. It was Alan Wake. Oh Great yeah, oh yeah, I totally forgot. Game. That was my. Check uh, it out. Oh, I, for some odd reason, I thought that was your number one. I don't even know why. Okay, then my number three is Dead Space. Um, I have not played much of it, but I did play the opening, and that game is extremely scary. Um, I cannot remember feeling so uncomfortable by any game before that one. Uh, I think it's incredible. I think it plays really great. It's extremely fun. But where those monsters and aliens or whatever would climb through the grates and all around, it was just, oh, man. I just think about that stuff. It's like, I want to go back, but I also don't. I don't want to go back. (laughs) (laughs) So that's actually my number one game. And I think what makes it scary for me is it's very psychological. Like you go to that part you even open up with like him getting that thing like shoved into his eye right he gets the needle yeah and Ugh. then you're what is it with horror games and eyes doesn't evil I, within two do something similar like they also i think do eye upgrades or whatever like for some odd reason that game or chronicles of riddick if you ever played that oh, game they yeah, also did like an yeah. eye upgrade what is it is it like because people know just how uncomfortable that makes you feel when you see yeah, anybody shove man, anything into someone's eye it, it immerses you um, oh, it doesn't immerse me. It makes me feel sick. I don't yeah, want to see that in their eye. It's off-putting. So with Dead Space, what really got me is the fact that it's like all of this was caused by religious fanaticism, you know, and I think that that's mm. something that you, you look at all like the supernatural elements in the Bible and like some of it is, you know, if it's misinterpreted, like like that's always been a, a fun like plot point, you know, even like in Indiana Jones, yeah. right, where they open the Ark of the Covenant. Everyone turns into skeletons and dies and stuff. So it's like melted. I always like those type of stories. And then with Dead Space, what what they did, I remember one scene in particular, you're in the nursery, right? And all these little babies have turned into these monsters with like sword arms. I haven't got there yet. But oh that, uh, my you can gosh. feel feel free to no no feel free to spoil this because I I you can, only got through the intro. I so you go into the, the nursery and you hear the little like nursery chimes you know they have on the like, yeah. toys and stuff the music box type thing and you yeah. can you can hear babies crying but you also hear it's like going around the air vents around you and you don't know where it's coming from right so Here's the real like, spoiler is that noise is actually howard the duck you just it, oh didn't know no. this at the time he comes out and then he tries to you know in a relationship with you and that's what the scariest part of dead space is yeah you are running from a life relationship life size howard the duck yeah and he is very aggressive he does not take no for an answer he's a <laughs> 1980s uh man duck okay Ooh. so get away from him no sorry yeah. about derailing you um that sounds spooky and i cannot wait to play it yeah i think that's your whole list right that is my whole list you got me so i've got one last game which is the scariest game i have ever played one that i have not finished but that dr donna says is amazing one of his favorite games of all time resident evil 7 i knew i would have issues with that game when after i finished resident evil 2 remake i downloaded the demo and i couldn't finish the demo in the middle of the day And since then, I purchased it for like 10 bucks. It's now part of Games Pass, but I purchased it and played about two hours. And it is still difficult for me to play that game in the daytime. It's just a mix of like how scary that game is mixed with being in first person where you cannot see anything around you. It just, oh my goodness, man. So that is, that's a first person game? Yeah. The whole game's in first person. Wow. So that's it totally unlike the other Resident Evils where you're in third person. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil 8, that will also be in first person because they realize like, how good of an idea that was. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think after Alien Isolation came out, which could have made my honorable mention because I've played some of it, but I didn't even get to the part where the alien is there. So I was like, well, I can't 
It's not scary at all yet. I'm just walking around a spaceship. So I've only played like maybe an hour of it. Could people um, hear you but scream? Resident Evil people, they cannot hear me scream. It's space, man. They just can't. No. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil 7 is is very scary. If you like scary games, play that. And if you have VR, from what I've heard, Resident Evil 7 in VR, I think it's only on PSVR, which is weird. I've heard that's even scarier. I can't play the game barely on normal. I have not wanted to go back because how scared I am by it that, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever play it in VR. I'm not even sure I'll finish it. But if you like spooky stuff and you like scary stuff, I would be very surprised if you did not find that game at least partially frightening, at least at the beginning where you don't have any weapons and you are walking around a house while other AI is walking around. Nice, nice. Yeah, I am. Uh, it's it's on my Games Pass queue right now, so I'm excited to play it. It's good, man. It is really good. I wish I could finish it. I may do it at some point, but like I said, it's 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 kind of like when I watch It. Did you ever watch the It films, the recent releases? Yes. It yeah. Chapter one and chapter two. I, I'm a scaredy cat, so like I watch those, and the first one was much scarier to me than the second. But that's also because of probably the way I watched the second, where I <laughs> covered my ears at the scary moments. Because you know, actually, if you can't hear stuff, it's like not scary at all. Sound it's is a, like the majority yeah. of fear. <laughs> um yeah but the first one man i did not sleep well for the first night at all and i didn't sleep well for the second two nights after and it's like ridiculous because the movie's about a alien demon clown thing and it's like so removed from reality but i don't know what it is man scary stuff gets to me i do not like it um speaking of one last semi-scary thing what do you think of bioshock i remember dr don always used to tell me that this was scary to him but I never uh, felt that scared about the original. The Bioshock. thing that like Bioshock, what made it like not scary to me was that you saw the enemies, you know, when you walked into a room, yeah. they weren't like, you can hear the boom, 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 the footsteps of the big daddies. But yeah. like you walk into a room, you could see the enemies like, and you knew just because of the style of game Bioshock was, they were going to attack you at some point. So it wasn't yeah. really scary to me. Like, yeah, it had some like anxious moments, but it, you knew yeah. what you were going to get throughout that game. Yeah, man. I uh, I didn't feel like it was bad at all either, but you know, I need to be back in that time and place to see. And also, when we were younger, just stuff didn't scare me very yeah. much. So, yeah. um, never been a big horror fan, but I also didn't like stuff that I feel uncomfortable by now, like The Devil's Advocate. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. That movie actually makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, that is something that probably as a college or late high school i would have thought oh this is cool and never thought to never thought about twice yeah um anything you want to say before we head out for the day and get ready for an awesome week next week anything you want to add no i mean if you guys have some scary games we didn't hit go ahead and send us an email at super bs what is our the rest of our email address? Blanky I don't Boo. know. That's why I was loving that you were doing this. Come on, Ooh, finish. Hold it on, now. hold on. No, I got it here. How I don't even have the login. Sound. I don't know if Super we can get BS in here. Supergamescast to... at gmail dot com. Nice. Okay, if we can find a way to log into that account. Oh, you know what? I think we can. I think that's how we send files to each other is through that yeah, old one. So yeah, I we must have figured it. out. We have it. Um, Okay, so we can do that. Uh, we may have some guests on next week. That's the plan. That's Should right. be a blast. Uh, we'll yep. probably continue more of this spooky, scary talk. But if we got our guests on next week, we might take a diversion for the week. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I've never been a big fan of Halloween, but it is still fun to enjoy these weird moments and spookinesses from the month. Uh, so till next week, I will smell you later and uh, watch Howard the Duck on me. And by on me, I mean just, I don't know, I recommend it, I guess. It's, it's, but don't watch it with your parents. It's pornography. Quack, um, quack, quack, quack. Oh, quack, that's Mighty quack, Ducks, quack, not quack. Power of the Ducks. And watch Mighty Ducks right after uh, to stay on theme. <laughs> Howard the Duck and Mighty Ducks. Uh, I wish those were switched for kids. They would uh, learn a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, my doodly, I will talk to you late. Peace. Peace. Oh, yeah.